It often happens that beginner pool players don't know how to play a particular shot or they think they know, but the reality is completely different. So please think for a moment how many times you have had a situation like this and thought it was a shot you couldn't miss. And then you did something like this. Yeah, it looked really easy, but we made a mistake. Therefore, I decided to classify the 10 most common situations on a scale of 1 to 10, which we should know how to do in order not to make such mistakes. But what we need before start? Of course, we need the Q stick. We need chalk. I think the balls should come in handy too. And I need my uh, tool instead of my left hand. So let's start with the easiest situation to execute. And our goal is to pot the object ball which is near the bottom corner pocket and position the cue for the 9 ball located on the main point of the table. This situation can be challenging for beginners as they often scratch in the middle pockets due to difficulties in finding the correct path for the cue. The best approach in this situation is to visualize straight lines between the corner pockets and the 9 ball and consider the spin and speed required for the cue ball to reach the desired area. You need to visualize the natural path of the cue ball which would take after potting the object ball without any spin. Once you find this line, you can determine the spin and speed needed to change its path. We can place the cue ball on either the left or right side of the table, and the first option is easier as it only requires a slight amount of right spin to make contact with the long rail before the left middle pocket. It is crucial to find the correct speed of this shot. Playing too lightly can leave the cue ball too close to the rail, resulting in a difficult final shot. But playing too hard can cause a losing of position potentially preventing us from making the next shot. In the second option, we can place the cue ball to the other side of the table, but this time we need to apply more spin and speed to cover the longer distance. And again, it is important to find the correct path for the cue ball to avoid scratching in the right middle pocket or playing too hard which could lead to a loss of position for the final ball. The second situation refers to making a bank shot and I am sure that many pool players don't know exactly what happens with the object ball during this type of shot. In the first way, you have to imagine a situation where the cue ball, the object ball and the pocket you want to hit are on the lines showing the natural angle. Therefore, if we play with center ball, the object ball will go directly to the opposite middle pocket after it bounces off the right long rail. So, this is our benchmark for a natural angle shot. To determine it, we have to use the diamonds on the rails. First of all, we need to draw a line through the cue ball and the object ball that will mark us a point on the long rail. Then, from this point, we need to mark a parallel line to the short rail. At this point, we have an angle and if we mirror that angle, the next line will show us the point on the opposite long rail where the object ball should go when we hit it with stop shot and natural speed. And in this situation, when we play a shot but using left spin, the cue ball will give the object ball the opposite rotation, which will change the angle of the rebound of the object ball from the first rail. The same thing will happen when we use right spin, then the object ball will bounce with a bit of left spin, causing it to make a double contact with the cue ball. When we attempt to play the same shot but with lower spin and more speed, we can observe that the object ball follows a different path again. This change in path is influenced by the altered amount of spin and speed on the cue ball. Using side spin on these types of shots can help us in a situation like this where the object ball is very close to the rail and when we hit with center contact, it will result in a double contact. In this case, we need to play the object ball a bit to the left and use the low right spin to make the ball bounce off the rail and go towards the pocket. 
but if we make this shot at the same point but using left spin, then as you can see the object ball will go completely in a different direction. In the first example, we encounter a situation where we need to play 8 ball, but the cue ball doesn't have enough space to get near the 9 ball and hit the 8 ball in the correct point. This occurs because if you hit the cue ball exactly at the center point of the ghost ball for this shot, you can see that there is no chance to hit the object ball because the 9 ball partially obstructs the correct line. We must execute a curve shot, which can be achieved by elevating our cue and hitting the cue ball with low side spin. This will cause the cue ball to deviate from a straight line. Since we have elevated the cue, the cue ball will be spinning with the side spin on different surface, aiding us in avoiding contact with the 9 ball and allowing us to hit the object ball at the correct point. Additionally, the side spin applied to the cue ball will help push the object ball towards the pocket due to the spin induced roll. However, it is crucial to apply the correct amount of spin and speed as hitting the 9 ball first would result in a foul shot. In the following example, we have a situation where the cue ball, 9 ball and another ball number 4 are positioned on a straight center line parallel to the long rails. And we want to hit ball number 4, but as you can see, 9 ball effectively blocks direct contact. Therefore, we need to use rails first to make this contact. In the first option, we can use only one rail to achieve this. To do so, we need to draw a straight line parallel to the short rail from the object ball. This line will indicate a point on the long rail. And then we need to imagine a line between this point on the rail and the midpoint between the cue ball and the object ball. In the next step, by carefully positioning this line on the cue ball, it will indicate the point on the long rail where we need to hit the cue ball to make contact with the object ball. Additionally, it is crucial to remember an important rule that after the contact between the cue ball and object ball, one of these balls needs to touch a rail. Failure to do so will result in a foul shot. Alternatively, we can achieve the same result using two rails, but employing a different system. Firstly, we need to find the midpoint between the cue ball and the object ball. From this point, we need to imagine a straight line to the center point of the pocket. And in next step, by carefully positioning this line on the cue ball, it will indicate the point on the long rail where we need to hit the cue ball. Now let's consider the fifth situation where the cue ball and the object ball are frozen with the short rail and the object ball is one diamond away from the pocket. Our goal in this shot will be to put the object ball and position the cue ball for the 9 ball, which is located on the other side of the table. This may seem impossible at the first look because we don't have an angle and the balls are frozen with the rail. However, there are two ways to achieve the desired position and it is crucial to understand how to execute them. The first method involves using high left spin with backhand English and you can learn more about this technique in the episode displayed on the top of your screen. It is important to apply the correct amount of spin and speed to the cue ball because we need to slide cheat the pocket and hitting this shot too hard will result in a missed shot. The second option is much more challenging and requires using backspin with backhand English again. In both methods, the length of the bridge is crucial. Using a bridge that is too short or too long will affect the effectiveness of BHE system. Additionally, when using backspin, the cue ball needs to travel a longer distance and executing a deep and straight stroke is essential to achieve a good position for the 9 ball. And now we are facing another situation where the cue ball and the object ball are frozen to the rail. This time we have the final 9 ball to play and let's reflect on how many times you have encountered this situation and missed this shot. This shot may appear really easy, but the reality is quite different. 
attempting to play this shot exactly on the center point of the object ball will cause the cue ball to hit it at the wrong point. Any slight mistake can cause the cue ball to hit the rail first, resulting in a missed shot. To overcome this difficult situation, we need to aim using low inside spin with the front hand English system. And again, you can find all the informations about this system at the top of your screen. As you can observe, when we hit the cue ball with side spin and using FHE system, the cue ball curves slightly off the rail and then returns to the correct line to hit the object ball at the ghost ball point. The key to this shot is finding the correct speed and we need to make contact with the both the rail and the object ball in the same time. Naturally, there is a small margin of error, but sometimes it can be too large, resulting in a missed shot once again. If the distance between the balls is different, we must adjust the speed accordingly to hit the object ball at the correct point. In this situation, we accidentally end up with a stride position to the object ball, but the next ball is on the other side of the table. Additionally, the cue ball is very close to the rail, which makes this shot more difficult. Many pool players try to force this shot and create an angle out of nowhere, often resulting in a missed shot. However, there are two ways to escape this situation and achieve a perfect position for the next ball. In this situation, we need to hit the rail first and then the cue ball at the ghost ball point in order to pocket the object ball and achieve a good position. Calculating this type of shot effectively can be challenging for beginners, and here is how you can do it. First of all, you need to imagine the ghost ball for this shot and identify its center point. After that, you need to measure the distance between this point and the edge of the short rail. These two points will show you the distance which should be parallel to the long rail. In next step, you need to move this measured distance from the point located on the short rail along the previous line. And finally, you will arrive at a point that is off the table, indicating where you need to hit the cue ball to put the object ball. In the first method, as you can see, you can use topspin and only one rail to make position for the 9 ball to the other side of the table. Alternatively, in the second method, you can position the cue ball on the same side of the 9 ball, but this time by using low spin. After making contact with the object ball, the cue ball will naturally move towards the desired area without using rails. But this time we need to aim a bit later on the short rail, because when we apply backspin during kick shots, this spin changes the cue ball's trajectory after it bounces off the rail. In the following example, we have a critical situation with a two-ball plant. These two balls are in touching position, but the plant is not directed towards the corner pocket. Instead, it's a bit on the short rail. Theoretically, we wouldn't be able to put the 9-ball into the corner pocket, but reality proves otherwise. To fix this problem, we need to hit the first ball number 4 on the left side with half contact and apply left spin. This spin will cause the 4 ball to be pushed by the spin induced throw. Consequently, in the next step, the 4 ball will push the 9 ball towards the corner pocket. However, finding the correct speed for this shot is really challenging. The key is to play with a low speed because if we hit the cue ball too hard, the side spin will not push the balls enough to make 9 ball into the pocket. On the other hand, there might be a situation where the plant is directed towards the other side on the long rail. In this case, to put the 9 ball we need to hit ball number 4 on the right side, this time using right spin. And once again, finding the correct speed for this shot is crucial, because the cue ball needs to push the object ball to a different side than before. This time we have a situation where the 4 ball blocks the path to the pocket for the 8 ball. At first look, it seems impossible to put the 8 ball into the corner pocket, but I will show you an amazing way to fix this. And this time we need to hit the 8 ball which will then hit the rail first and subsequently collide with the 4 ball, ultimately heading towards the corner pocket. 
It is quite challenging to determine the precise point on the rail, but I will do my best to explain the process. Firstly, you need to imagine a ghost ball positioned behind the four ball. It is crucial that the center points of these two balls should be on the same line which is perpendicular to the line connecting the center point of the pocket and the four ball. In the next step, we need to measure the distance between the center point of the ghost ball and the edge of the short rail. And this length should be parallel to the long rail. Moving forward, we need to move distance along the same line to identify the precise point where we should hit the 8 ball on the short rail. After that, the 8 ball makes contact with the 4 ball and it will find its way into the pocket. It is important to note that no side spin is required for this shot. Only center ball hitting is necessary. The critical factor lies in locating the accurate point of contact for the 8 ball on the short rail. Even a slightest miscalculation in this regard would cause the 8 ball to hit the 4 ball at the wrong point, resulting in a completely missed shot. The last and in my opinion the most difficult situation to control involves a shot where the object ball is frozen to the rail, while the cue ball is positioned in the center area of the table and we need to put the object ball into the corner pocket. In this situation, we can't play with a center ball because we need to hit the rail and the object ball in the same time. And we have only one option which is to apply a significant amount of inside spin to make the cue ball curve slightly. If we execute this shot perfectly, the side spin will help push the object ball towards the corner pocket. To determine if we hit it correctly, we can observe that after a perfect contact, the cue ball will travel towards the top short rail and hit it far away from the corner pocket. However, if we hit the object ball first, then the cue ball will go towards the left long rail, and on the other hand, if we hit the rail first, the cue ball should go towards the corner pocket. In this situation, really challenging is finding the correct speed for this shot and how much we need to adjust our aiming due to deflection and curve that the cue ball experiences with this spin. Of course, if we have the cue ball in the center point of the table, it will be even more challenging to determine the correct spin and speed to put the object ball. As you can see, we often encounter critical situations in pool games, especially for beginners who may struggle with executing difficult shots leading to significant mistakes. I hope you enjoyed this episode and please let me know in the comments if you agree with my selection of the most critical situations. Drawing from my over 15 years of experience, I aimed to demonstrate the most effective ways to navigate these shots. If you found this helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you in the next lesson. Take care.